live once again. My name is Michael Waite, and we are here with another edition of the OpenShift Commons Briefings Operator Hours. Today, we are lucky enough to have with us our friends from TriggerMesh, and we have uh, Sebastian Goazgan, the co-founder and chief product officer of TriggerMesh, and then joining us from India today, we have Samir Naik, the senior software engineer who's going to be showing us some of the capabilities in, uh, in, a, in a demonstration of the Trigger Mesh software. Uh, Sebastian, how are you today? Doing great. Thank you very much. How are you? I'm doing really well. Thanks for thanks for joining us. We're we're happy to happy to have you here. I know we've you know from Red Hat's perspective, we've been working you know we work with software vendors to help them test and certify their software as a Red Hat operator, <clears throat> as a Red Hat operator for OpenShift, so that, uh, you know, customers, when they, you know, are using our container orchestration platform, know that they're going to have the best two, uh, best day two supportability, you know, for production environments. So, uh, Trigger Mesh has a, you know, we've been working with you folks for quite a while. You have a Red Hat certified operator. It's available in our registry, it's available in our marketplace, uh, the Red Hat marketplace. But um, tell me a little bit about Trigger Mesh. You're, you're one of the founders of, of, the, of the company. Um, tell, us, tell us a little bit about how that came about, you know, what's in the name Trigger Mesh and, and so forth. Yeah, sure. Is that, Samir, is that your kid or around? No, no, it's just my chair making noise. Ah, it's your chair making noise. <laughs> I, All right. I, I, was, I was wondering. I was wondering if it's one of his interns, one of the new summer interns, has already has already shown up. Yeah. Yeah. No problem. Uh, you know, Trigger Mesh. So we we got started when Google announced Knative, uh, Knative project. So that was July 2018. Uh, they announced Knative. Uh, I had created Kubeless, uh, one of the first FAS uh, function as a service solution on top of Kubernetes. And, and when, when Google went ahead and announced Knative, so Red Hat was on board, uh, and then IBM, uh, you know, was, was on board, even though they, you know, of course, uh, you know, you and IBM were working on OpenWhisk, but then everybody aligned on Knative. Sure. Uh, ultimately, you know, Pivotal, VMware also, also joined, right? So. You know, it looked like everybody was going, all the vendors at least were going to join forces and, and work on Knative. So, uh, you know, I decided to, to launch a new startup, Trigger Mesh, uh, to, to work in the serverless, uh, you know, serverless ecosystem uh, on top of Knative. And our, fun, our, our, you know, vision was not just function, but it was, you know, especially uh, event orchestration. Because we think that eventing is the big, uh, you know, the, the big component of serverless as you're trying to to build event-driven applications. So we created Trigger Mesh very quickly in, in July 2018 with my, my co-founder Mark Hinkle. Uh, we helped GitLab develop GitLab Serverless. Uh, so GitLab Serverless was some some work we did for them very early on, and since then, you know, we we kept on uh, on developing, uh, you know product around Knative, you know, and, and understanding the use cases, you know, talking to lots of folks, doing a lot of market discovery. And then finally, uh, you know, at some point we, we thought we were ready. So last December, December 2019, we, we raised uh, a seed round, 3 million seed round from Index and Crane. Um, and early 2020, we were super excited. We decided to start building the team. That's when, you know, Ultimately, uh, Samir, Samir joined. We're fully remote, fully distributed team. Uh, so you know, we got started first engineering hire, you know, March first, uh, and then end of March, COVID, right? Or I mean, it started before, right? But uh, sure. so it's been a, it's been an interesting year, uh, you know. But thankfully, we are, we all know how to work in a distributed manner and, and remotely. So it's been it's been fine. Yeah, I was going to say, you know, we, you're you're fully distributed and remote. Um, we at Red Hat had a large component of the company remote, but you know, certainly 
lots and lots of us were working in offices and it's it's been uh it's been pretty interesting for the last nine or ten months everyone you know i think we have 380,000 employees now in the in the company in the combined company and everybody's working from home and i thought it was going to make less work i thought it was going to be a little less busy and it turns out it's uh you know things are busier than ever which which i suppose is a good problem to have but um but you folks have been really really busy you you've had you know You've had a pretty exciting year in uh, in this year. You guys got named by CRN one of the top ten coolest startups of 2020. Um, what what makes you guys so cool? Yeah, uh, yeah. So you know, it's been an exciting year. You know, because we we were building the company. I mean, you know, whatever the you know the the, the world environment had with the with the pandemic. Uh, you know, it was exciting nonetheless to, to, to build a company. So first you put a team together, right? So, you know, guys like Samir in India, we have, you know, uh, Antoine in Germany and Spain and, you know, the US and I'm in Switzerland. So, you know, putting all those folks together, building a team so that we can start building a product that's been, that's been very, very exciting. And, and then, you know, uh, really as, as startup people trying to find the real product market fit, it's, it's actually, it's actually quite fun because you have a vision, you know, which is, you know, developers are going to, to adopt or, and build event driven applications, uh, using serverless functions and then cloud services, uh, increasingly. Uh, so that's, that's our vision, but then you need to find, you need to find the sweet spot. So it's been, uh, it's been really, really good. And then, you know, coolest, coolest startup. It's because we're working with cutting edge technology. So on top of Kubernetes, on top of, you know, OpenShift, uh, you know, we push the, we push Knative. We're number six contributor in Knative behind, you know, all the big dogs, right? You know, you, VMware, Google, All right, So we're, we're a small startup, but we still manage to, to, you know, to, to get news, to get news out there, to get, you know, to get contribution in the ecosystem. So here, you know, on, on the OpenShift, uh, on the OpenShift uh, marketplace, we put some AWS event sources, right? So you're trying to build an event driven application using events from AWS. Uh, but then you want to trigger workload on your OpenShift cluster. You know, you have an open, uh, an open source project from us. Uh, and then it's also available in the marketplace. So we do we do lots of things, and we make sure that you know people know about them. And then and then we, being small, we we also you know that that allows us to go quite fast. Now you uh, you use the word trigger there for triggering. Is that you know trigger mesh? Is that is that sort of you know what's in the name? Yeah, 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 totally. So the, the vision was definitely building serverless application that we, we saw as a mesh of uh, serverless functions, cloud services on AWS, on Google Cloud, on Azure Cloud, and then on-premises workload running in Kubernetes or uh, uh, OpenShift, right? So we saw this hybrid, you know, world, right? Uh, so this composition, this mesh, of you know workload and services that's what we th we saw and and then we're like you know to be able to uh, uh start the execution of those workloads you're going to need to events to flow through the system and you know certain you know state changes are going to trigger those workloads so that's how we came up with trigger mesh uh which i think is great but for some people it's also a little bit confusing because they think we are a service mesh company we're not a service mesh company. <laughs> sure. Now you you use the word serverless, um, and serverless seems to be, you know, one of the one of the you know buzzwords of, of of the year. Is it really serverless though, or doesn't that really mean somebody else's servers? Yeah. So that, there's a meme actually on uh, on Google. It's exactly what you just said. You know, serverless is just somebody else's servers. Uh, I just I just gave a talk at KubeCon. It's called serverless or serviceful. Um, serverless, I think, it's a little bit of an unfortunate wor word because everybody says, "Oh, you know, there are no servers." Well, of course, there are servers, right? Uh, you know, the, you have a process running; it needs to run somewhere. So yes, it's basically managed services. Um, and then, really, you know, the, the the philosophy behind it is really 
uh, you have more and more services in your you know in your apps in your enterprise you have AWS you have ServiceNow Salesforce Elasticsearch Twilio on-premises you know services so you it's just full of services and you're trying to make sense of this you're trying to compose them you're going to you're trying to trigger them you know when something uh, happens right so service full would be much better I think Sur anyway. service service full full yeah huh. yeah okay. that came from that came from Patrick Dubois so John Willis works with you now you know the one of the, the you know, leaders of the DevOps uh, movement. So Patrick Dubois was you know, a good friend of uh, good friend of John, and I think Patrick came up with uh, Serviceful, you know, 2017, so three years ago. Uh, I remember he gave a talk at in, in Belgium at Config Management Camp, and he said, "Hey, you know what? I'm not going serverless. I'm I'm actually full of services. I'm, I'm going Serviceful." <laughs> so, Seems to make yeah. sense. Yeah. So you got any war stories for us? Meaning, like, you know, you're 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 one of the top ten coolest startups of 2020. You know, <laughs> what 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 are what are the, the the big challenges that you see your customers are trying to solve? You know, moving from the data center into a you know public cloud and to a multi cloud environment is is great. You know, OpenShift allows people to to build once and deploy anywhere, but but it's not all perfect, right? I mean, there's this this new flexibility brings all kinds of new challenges for customers trying to run those production workloads in the multi-cloud environment. How are you folks helping address those issues for for you know for, for customers? Yeah, so you know, we got we got the seed in December, we started hiring in March. So we're nine months in, right? So, you know, I don't have a a, a huge treasure of uh, war stories, right? Um, you know, but the the, the the POCs that we're that we're doing with, you know, uh, pretty especially a lot of financial, a lot of banks, you know, come to us uh, inbound and they have, you know, they have issues. Uh, mostly, what what came up is that they have integration issues. So when I say composing services, it, it translates into integration issues, and then. Um, so example, you know, we work with uh, a bank, you know, they, they started doing lots of stuff with Salesforce. So all of their customers are in Salesforce. Every time they do a change, it's in Salesforce. It's their database. And they need their backend infrastructure to basically keep in sync with what's in, what's in Salesforce. So, you know, big challenge, you know, linking, linking the two in integration, right? So it's not... Uh, you know that, that's the type of integration that we're seeing, and we're seeing you know more and more. So you know Azure Healthcare API that somebody wants to use, but then they have lots of things on AWS, right? So they need to to link Azure Healthcare to uh, SNS or you know uh, EventBridge, you know things like this. Um, overall, you know the, the the big challenge that all the startups have, you know, I, I feel is that uh, we're all very cutting edge. And there, multi, there are multiple speeds, right? The the speed of a startup that's you know cutting edge with products like Knative or Argo events or so on, and then the the pace of an enterprise, uh, you know, it's totally it's totally different in the you know innovation curve, right? So, uh, you know, you still see a lot of companies that are trying to put CI/CD in place, for example. You know, uh, you know, we need CI/CD. We need to speed up. Deployment to OpenShift, so it's one of our one of our big POCs. You know, it's been one of their biggest driver. How do we speed up deployment to OpenShift from 30 days to one hour, right? So they put lots of things in place, uh, but then you know there are big questions like security, you know, security evaluation, uh, risk assessment, things like this. So how how do they make that happen? Which is a you know, basic basic problem. So it's all, you know, it all comes back down to automation. How can you, how can I put more automation in my, you know, in my infrastructure, in my pipelines, right? So that's where, that's where events come into play. And that's where I like, hey, I need events from SonarCube. I need events from Jenkins. I need events from Bitbucket, you know, GitLab. Uh, you know, I need events from all over the place. I need a way to be able to codify 
you know, what happens to those events and what they should trigger. And once I have done that, once I have automated all those flows, you know, I'm going to be able to speed up my deployment to OpenShift. Right? Is, it, right is that is that is that realistic going from 30 days to one hour? Yeah, I, uh, I was off the phone like a couple hours ago with uh, a big bank that just did this. Really? 37, 37 days to one hour to OpenShift. Yep. Absolutely. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> this I, I is not were, this I is thought you were just making a random statement. Oh, that's, no, that's no, 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 no. Absolutely not random. That Yeah. And you know, I'm going to give you this this answer. I'm under NDA, but that that one is actually true. You know, no, no, that's that's for real. That's wow. for real. Yeah. Well, you yeah, want And a lot of people a lot of people are trying to do this. So the big challenge for us as a startup is that you know, you start talking to folks and you're like, oh, you want to go serverless. You want to do event-driven, blah, 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 blah. But what's the business driver? What's the, you know, what, what is what is going to, to make them take the decision? And, and, you know, you go back to very simple things, you know. How can I speed up my time to market, my time to value, right? Which, you know, uh, that, that one example is very telling because, you know, it's absolutely true and it's, you know, speeding up the... The time it takes to, uh, you know, to get to go live. Yeah. Well, okay. We we were we were talking when we were when we were on the bridge just before we went live, and you were mentioning that there was uh, that there was something that you wanted to to show here before we before we get on to Samir. I know Samir has a demo that he's going to be sharing with everyone, but uh, I think you said that there was something that you wanted to show before we get to Samir. Yeah, can we do this? Uh, so Samir has a cool demo on OpenShift, but I can I can show you uh, I can show you some basic things here. Okay, cool. So uh, I logged into uh, to our Trigger Mesh. We have a we have a SaaS, so we you know you can deploy on uh, you can deploy on any Kubernetes cluster, but we have a we have a SaaS offering. So here I'm I'm logged in. Uh, you know we have anyway lots of little nice things in the UI. This is what we call our bridge catalog. So they represent integrations, basic integration between you know services, right? You're trying to go service full. So you got you got things like you know Salesforce to Elasticsearch, Slack to Confluent, Slack to Google Sheet, right? So all of, all of these you know they are in the, in our catalog, and you say use template, and then you can you can fill up the the you know the parameters to to basically configure those event sources and the event. We call them target. Some people call them uh, event syncs, right? So event sources to event. Uh, sync. So when you do this, you end up building, you know, the the, the key to trigger mesh, which is uh, bridges. You build a bridge, a bridge between two services. Uh, what's interesting, because we rely on uh, on Kubernetes, is that those bridges, uh, you know, they have a declarative API, right? So we have a bunch of CRDs. Uh, you know, we extend the Kubernetes API, and then you know, with that that powerful UI, you you can create those manifests that represents those bridges, right? Uh, and if we try to do a you know a, a quick bridge here, I want to do I want to do a SQS SQS to a, just a web app that that shows the event. So here I see the the sources that are available. So I'm going to take create a, a, an AWS event source, right, uh, you know, Red Hat demo. Uh, we're going to go through a broker, uh, a message broker, and here I need the uh, ARN of my, my queue. So I have my AWS console. I'm going to zoom in. I copy the, the ARN. I put it here. So this is, this is, that's all I need to configure an AWS event source. And Samir can do the same thing on, on OpenShift. And then I need to send that event somewhere. Yeah, go ahead. Oh, I was just gonna say, is, is, it, so it's for any for any cloud though, right? Not just not just AWS, could, could work on any of them. That's just, this is just that one example. Yeah, so that example is just a, uh, an AWS event source. Right, we we have a few sources for Azure and, and and Google. 
Uh, and here as a target, I put a, a basic web app. So when I've done this, I've created my bridge and I, I submit, right? So now we have a controller, you know, that's running in your Kubernetes cluster. It's going to see the objects and it's going to create them. And of course, I messed up the I messed up the name. Uh, you see that I have a full manifest for you know that bridge, right? So that bridge is running now. It's green. What I'm going to do is I'm going to open the web app that is the the target for the event. So it's that Sokai four. This is actually a serverless call that a function, but serverless application. And so when I put events in SQS, I'm going to consume them and then they get routed to this app, right? So I go in SQS and here I say, you know, hey Mike, hi, hi Mike. I put the message in SQS and then, you know, boom, I get it uh, right away, all right? So, no. So we have we have Chris in the background, right? Hi, Chris. You know, said send message, right? And then we get you know, hi, Chris. So that you know the it 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 looks simple, but what you have here is that you have a, a scalable SQS consumer that's been automatically deployed in your Kubernetes cluster. It can it can scale its Kubernetes deployment. Every time there is a, a, a message that's being put in SQS, we get that. The source emits a cloud event. We follow the CNCF specification. It emits a cloud event uh, over HTTP. It gets to a broker. And then from that broker, uh, it gets sent to the target, which is you know, this one, this, this web app. And that basic web app just you know, shows you, the, shows you the, the JSON. So you see the, you see the body. All right. And why uh, the why the why the sockeye salmon? Why why did you choose that? You have you have to ask uh, his name Scott, who is now at uh, <laughs> who, who is now at uh, at VMware. It's because it's, it's based on WebSocket. So sock why why the fish? I'm not sure why. Do you know Samir? I, I think there is a fish named sockeye. The sockeye fish, I think. Okay. Not sure. Yeah. And, and, and when here, you say, go oh, ahead, Sebastian. When you say any any Kubernetes, does that mean you know uh, any uh, community edition of Kubernetes as well, or or just the mainstream commercial ones, or any any area? So okay. uh, because we you know we're just uh, Trigger Mesh gets deployed. The entire Trigger Mesh platform is, is really, you know, a set of CRDs and a, a set of uh, controllers. The, the AWS event sources specifically, which are in the IBM marketplace, uh, you know, this is just, yeah, this is just one one controller, right? One, I mean, operator. And I was going to ask you about your operator. I know you, <clears throat> I think you, you got your, your operator built at the end of in July, in summertime of 2019 with us or something. How does, how does the operator help people who are using trigger mesh in either in a test and dev or in a production environment? So the, the AWS event sources, they're open source, right? We, we, we have bits of trigger mesh that are closed source, but the AWS event sources, they're open source. And it's really just a controller, right? So now the question becomes, you know, you have a controller, how do you deploy in OpenShift? You need to have an operator. That's where the, that's where the story gets a little bit funny. And, uh, you know, at some point we should, you know, we should discuss this, right? Because, so we need to create an operator to install our controller, right? Right. And, you know, the first one, I mean, how did we do this quickly? Well, we base it on a, a Helm chart. I was so going to say, so probably, <laughs> so probably a Helm chart is the easiest and fastest way to go, right? So we had an operator to install an Helm chart to install a controller. That's, it's, you know, it doesn't feel, it doesn't feel very optimal. Uh, but, you know, if we didn't have all of this to, to, to get through the, basically the operator hub, you know, it's just really a, a kube control apply. And you know you 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 apply the CRD and you deploy the controller and that's it. Okay. Well, and, I mean, you're 
so trigger mesh is, is 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 as a service right so the only correct me if i'm wrong but the only thing that that needs to be deployed on the customer's nodes is the, is the agent or the or the you know the thing that phones home if you will is that right no 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 so we have what i showed you is the SaaS. Right, so if you want to use it, you go to the SaaS. There is no connection to on-prem. Right, if you want to, what I just showed you, if you want that on-premises, then uh, you know you have to talk to us, and then we install all the bits in your Kubernetes cluster, OpenShift oh, okay. or or something else. Uh, I, I I would imagine for some of the some of the in the financial services industry that's probably the method of choice I would be willing to bet yes on premises yep yeah okay well so in, the mar in the marketplace sorry in the no, marketplace no, it's it's just the AWS event sources okay cool which uh, which you can use without the rest of trigger mesh right how does how does that work well, you know, you, you end up with just a, a controller, right? So you so you can you can configure the AWS event sources, and then the targets it's going to be OpenShift serverless, right? So that's you know we only provide you the sources; they are certified. You know we support them, but then the targets you fall back on OpenShift workload, OpenShift serverless, you know functions, right? Okay. Good. Smear, I think you're on deck. Well, yeah. And, uh, you know, welcome from uh, welcome from India. I, I thanks for staying up late. I think, or, yeah. or getting could, staying up late or getting up early. One of the two, right? We could put <laughs> pins on the on the world map so. in your back. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so hi, uh, my name is Samir. I am from Goa, like uh, Mike mentioned. Uh, so what I wanted to do is to extend on uh, Sebastian's demo. Uh, I I want to I want to demonstrate the same thing on uh, the OpenShift platform uh, using our operator that uh, was uh, mentioned by Sebastian. So like Seb mentioned that uh, Trigger Mesh Cloud is our SaaS offering, but we do package. Uh, this bits and pieces of our cloud platform and make it available. So one of these is the AWS event sources uh, package. So using that package, you could do the same sort of integration uh, by hand on uh, OpenShift. So what I want to demonstrate uh, is uh, an application use case where say, for example, you have an application a use case where uh, uh, you have a Kinesis data stream and uh, what your use case is that you want to pick out messages from the Kinesis data stream, modify them uh, as your application logic and then send them to a Kafka queue. Uh, uh, this is just an imaginary use case. Uh, so typically, if you're an application developer, uh, what you would go ahead and do is write a whole application for this scenario, do the integration with Kinesis, and then uh, do the integration with Kafka, and then write your application logic, right? So that is where uh, serverless comes into picture, where you don't have to bother about the integration with Kinesis and Kafka. You just work on your application logic and and just use the existing components. That That is the whole idea of serverless, right? Not there are no servers, there are servers, but you just focus on your application and don't bother about writing the Got Nginx it. part and all this. Samir, so, can, uh, I, Samir can I just jump in for one second? Um, yeah. I, we're having some questions come in in the Blue Jeans chat, and I wanted to make sure that we're getting these the question addressed and then and then answered because we're also going out on youtube live and facebook live so sebastian i don't know if you want to address that question so that the people on youtube and facebook can hear the question and the answer as well oh yeah sure so yeah i was replying to the question so there was one sorry samir there was one question uh are sources and syncs implemented as kafka connectors not not really because you don't necessarily use kafka as the messaging substrate uh so sources and syncs 
uh, that just deal with cloud events that are being sent over HTTP. Uh, and then it's the broker uh, under the under the hood that could be a, a Kafka a Kafka topic. Uh, but it could be something else than Kafka. It could be Kinesis or Azure Event Hub or Google PubSub. And Samir, why don't you why don't you jump on the uh, you know show us the OpenShift uh, yeah. the, the operator where we see the you know we see the how you did the the, the config of the AWS event sources. We can we can keep it a little bit more uh, you know interactive. Just and, and if 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 Chris Short picks up some more questions from YouTube and Facebook, do you are you Samir are you okay with us? Uh... Or do you want to hold the questions till the end of the demo? No, I'm okay pausing and uh, uh, for the questions to be. Okay. I'll, okay. I'll try and I'll try and uh, barge in politely if they come in. <laughs> yeah, and there are, in the demo there are going to be some points where there could be some pauses. So at that point, it could be a good. Uh, okay, great. Segment to have the question. Uh, so, like I was saying, uh, there's an imaginary use case where you want to uh, uh, consume AWS events occurring on the AWS Kinesis stream. So, some messages are coming to your Kinesis stream. Say you want to process them as an application logic and then send a processed uh, message to a Kafka queue. So, the use case can be anything, but this is just an example to give you an idea of. Uh, what you can do with our uh, sources component, right? So this is an overall view. Uh, you can see my screen, right? Uh, yeah. Yeah, 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 sure. Go ahead. Yep. This is an overview, uh, overview of how, what, what our application, what we want to achieve in our application. So, uh, so with that application in mind, uh, I will just quickly uh, go over the setup uh, that we want to do for. Uh, uh, for getting our application running. So here is my OpenShift console. Uh, this is just uh, some housekeeping work just to make uh, sure that we have everything uh, that we need, right? And so uh, we're just going to uh, have to install a couple of operators uh, to provide the infrastructure for this application. Uh, first thing is we need the OpenShift serverless platform. Uh, I just type serverless and I install the Red Hat OpenShift serverless. Just accept the defaults, uh, nothing wrong with that. Uh, so that's where, you know, Mike, when I when I said that, you know, you our operator in the marketplace is just the AWS sources and then you can target OpenShift serverless. So here, you know, he's installing the OpenShift serverless. Yeah. Operator, yep. which is which is Knative serving under the hood, right? Got it. So so you're gonna end up with Knative serving in your OpenShift cluster, which is a you know set of GRDs and it gives you scale to zero capability and auto scaling. So I just uh, completed installing uh, the serverless operator, and uh, this uh, I also instantiated the Knative serving and the Knative implementing APIs. So this is standard uh, installation pros process. If you uh, visit the README of that operator, that is how it has to be installed. Uh, Knative eventing on OpenShift, which is a GA now, I believe. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Uh, second thing is uh, now that we have so uh, the serverless components available, we can go ahead and install the AWS sources operator by Trigger Mesh. So we have uh, two versions available. It, it is the project is actually open source, but the one from the marketplace uh, you get uh, 90 days of trial before you can uh, you can ask for support. I think uh, so. We just go and install the. Uh, one from the catalog. Uh, again, just set the defaults. And this is the operator that uh, Seb was talking about, which is a operator, which is a Helm chart that installs the controller. And the same thing, uh, we need to instantiate uh, 
the API provided by the operator. So let's just go and instantiate in the default namespace. So this provides uh, the uh, infrastructure for our application to run. So one of the things that I had spoken about was we are going to post the message to a Kafka queue. So since we are using the OpenShift platform, uh, we can also deploy a Kafka queue on OpenShift. So let's take advantage of uh, that as well. So to do that, uh, there is a stream z operator available on uh, the operator hub so we can just go and install that one uh, in the defaults so maybe samir while you do this i can because that that can it's, be that ca that can be confusing so trigger mesh itself is not it's not a streaming platform so we we are a messaging platform so we need we need a messaging platform okay <laughs> Uh, Knative Eventing, same thing. Knative Eventing doesn't do uh, messaging. It's a set of API construct that allow you to uh, to build some uh, eventing flow, right? So Trigger Mesh uses Knative Eventing. We have additional bits like the AWS event sources for which we provide support, right? Uh, but under the hood, if you need messaging, you need something like Kafka, right? Or NATS or you know, RabbitMQ maybe, or Kinesis, right? So here, when you're on premises, it makes total sense to use Kafka. That's why, uh, you know, uh, uh, Samir is installing uh, a little Kafka cluster through uh, the StreamZ operator. Yeah. So uh, now that I have installed the StreamZ operator, uh, I can go and instantiate the Kafka cluster, which is pretty cool. Uh, this is all you need to do. Uh, to create a Kafka cluster, right? Uh, uh, this this uh, this part takes a little bit of time. Uh, so if there are any questions, maybe you can answer them. Can you sh can you show us the the GitHub repo of the AWS sources? Yeah. So the AWS sources are open source. Uh, it is at Trigger Mesh AWS event sources. You can find. Uh, and there is the code. Yes, this is code here. And then if uh, there's a config folder which has got samples, you can use these samples to actually start using the source and play around with. So show uh, us a manifest of the a Kinesis source, for example. Yeah, so Kinesis so will have Kinesis source. So this is what a manifest of the Kinesis source looks like, very minimal. You, we just specify the ARN of the Kinesis uh, chain, and then the credentials to access the AWS service, and then the sync where the events. So uh, when, a, uh, when an event is picked up from the Kinesis uh, data stream, it is sent to a sync element. And uh, in this case, in the default uh, broker sample, the default sample it is sent to the default broker on uh, Knative. So that one is so that one is interesting. So you see that the trigger mesh event sources are uh, a set of CRDs that allow you to uh, deploy uh, event consumers for specific AWS services. So here it's Kinesis. So you deploy this on your OpenShift cluster. Suddenly you're consuming events from Kinesis. Where do they go? They go to the the sync reference. So you see in the spec there is a there is a sync. So if you go back, if you back just a yeah, if you, there is a sync, right? And here that sync, you see that it's a Knative broker, but it can be it can be something else, right? Including an OpenShift uh, serverless function. So you know now you suddenly you have a flow. You're consuming messages from Kinesis, and they can go to your OpenShift serverless. Sorry, Samir. Go ahead. Yeah. Cool. The Kafka cluster is ready. Seems to be ready. Just hold on a minute. Uh, one second. <clears throat> so basically, what you're gonna show here, which is quite powerful, is that you, you're gonna show basically almost a, a sync between. Uh, and I, you know, my French accent is saying sync, but S Y N C, right? 
So you're going to sync Kinesis and Kafka. Yeah, yeah. So uh, just to complete my Kafka, so this Kafka cluster is uh, accessible only within the uh, within the OpenShift uh, platform. So what I, the way I'm going to post my messages to the Kafka cluster is through the HTTP API. So what I want to do is I want to uh, expose a REST bridge that is made available by the Kafka bridge component. So I will instantiate the Kafka bridge. It creates a REST proxy for my Kafka API, and then I will expose the bridge outside the cluster by setting up a route. So uh, again, uh, going to use the defaults. The bridge. Hold on, hold on. You said bridge minus one. Is that normal? <laughs> to be one. Good, 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 good catch. I was going to say the same thing. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's just go back. <laughs> so none of this is none of this is really trigger mesh specific. Uh, here we we we're doing it like really step by step from scratch, creating a Kafka cluster with Streamzy, creating the the HTTP uh, you know proxy so that we can uh, inject into Kafka. Uh, but on the other side, we have the the, the trigger mesh sources that are that are ready, uh, you know, and we're gonna we're gonna set up this Kinesis source shortly yeah yeah so uh so as the bridge is uh coming up uh, let's go and set up the route so so uh, the the idea of the route is to be able to access our test proxy right so i'll name it the same way my bridge This is cool because i'd never seen the full demo so i'm i'm, I'm getting an open shift crash course here <laughs> So yeah, so this uh, exposes uh, the REST API proxy on this URL. Uh, so the REST uh, request sent to this URL will go uh, to the Kafka cluster, right? So we have most, uh, we, we have all the things, so let's just create a Kafka topic. Kafka topic. I didn't know you could do all of this through the, the OpenShift console. Yes. That's pretty cool. App. You. So, so yeah, we have so a now... Kafka cluster. We have a we have a, an HTTP endpoint to get into that Kafka cluster. We have a topic. Yeah, we have a topic, and we we are pretty much ready. Uh, on the other end, I have set up a data stream on Amazon Kinesis. Uh, okay. Oh, I got logged on one second. Yeah, there is a question about there is a question about uh, Debezium. So you could. You could use things like Debezium if you're Kafka specific. The, the thing you need to, you, the thing that's interesting here is that uh, this particular demo, we are really talking about the, the Kafka with, with Streamzy, but if you're just using KNATB venting, all the Kafka bits are abstracted, right? And it could be something else under the hood. So if you're not using Kafka, uh, you could still use the trigger mesh sources and and use the eventing abstraction from from k native yeah. okay. so uh, yeah so I already have set up an uh, Kinesis data stream called my app stream here this is the ARN which we will need uh, while setting up our uh, Kinesis source k native uh, so let's just go and start with the demo. Uh, so now that we have all the components, I'll just go over the application, how the application will look. Uh, a little bit of K-native uh, knowledge is helpful here, but uh, try to follow along. It's not that difficult, right? So uh, what we have is the My App Stream, which is a, a, data, a data source on AWS Kinesis. The idea is to get it from uh, here to the Kafka queue. So to, to achieve this flow, we are going to use three components, uh, 
Uh, one is the AWS Kinesis source, which is the one which we just installed. Uh, and then we are going, like I have said that uh, in the use case, you want to modify the message in whatever way possible. So there's going to be an application logic uh, component that we are going to use. Uh, for that, we are going to use uh, another trigger mesh component called infra target, which is basically a component that allows us to write JavaScript within the declarative uh, syntax of creating a manifest, right? So you can write uh, JavaScript and just write in there, you can modify the message however you want. Or you could implement your own serverless function and deal with it, right? Uh, from there, uh, we will be using another component called HTTP sync, which is of ta kind HTTP target. It is similar to the HTTP source in uh, Knative. Uh, the difference is that HTTP target makes a post. So you can use it to post uh, uh, post messages uh, over an HTTP uh, endpoint. So which will basically, uh, so this, uh, this component will make a post to the Kafka REST proxy and uh, which basically will, the message will then end up in the Kafka queue if everything goes well. Funny. Uh, so, so Samir, just just go ahead and show us show us the source configure uh, because we're gonna be running a bit out of, out of time. Yeah, so actually I was supposed to do the whole demos. So I'll just use uh, manifest that I already have. Uh, so go for it. Set set everything up, and then you know Mike and I. You, you know Mike, if you have questions, you you and I we can we can talk while. Uh, well, Samir gets everything set up and then we can we can keep watching what he's doing. Yeah. Ouch. Yeah, so the, the, the person who asked the question about glue, are we, are we creating event-based infrastructure glue to connect all services in the cloud? Yeah, 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 you could, you could say it like this. So here, you know, we're really getting down and down and dirty because Samir had, you know, created a Kafka cluster, and now we're creating, we're talking about uh, transforming the events that are flowing through the system, because the Kafka proxy needs uh, events in a certain shape. So what comes out of the Kinesis source needs to be transformed before we can send it to the, the Kafka proxy and, and before it gets uh, accepted. So so here, you know, we're, we're touching on really all the components to build a uh, you know, an event-driven application uh, in OpenShift uh, using trigger mesh sources, using OpenShift serverless, using the Kafka streams the operator. It's the the whole shebang, right? Uh, the, the 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 strength of it, and you know, going back to you know what what we were talking earlier with uh, you know some of the the proof of value that we're doing with uh, financial institution. What they really like is that at the end of the day, your event-driven application is fully declared with an API, right? So, you know, your event sources are uh, use a declarative API, your syncs use a declarative API, the triggers, the transformation, that's really what you get with Trigger Mesh. And once you have this representation, it's just like your Kubernetes manifest, <clears throat> stick them in version control, source of truth, and then use your CI CD system to, to manage them. Use your GitOps right to you know we've just just, just got 46 million to to do github so you know adopt your GitOps mindset and uh and you can you can manage your event driven applications the the same way and as had a question about um do you have some security context for the messaging mesh events in json uh i'm not exactly sure what that question means but uh uh, you know, in Knative, you can you can if you use Istio or you know another service mesh, you can turn on the mesh. Uh, a lot of people don't use the mesh; they just use the ingress capability. But if you want, you can turn on the service mesh, which gives you mutual TLS between uh, between services. So you have you have added security. Uh, so if you if you're talking about messaging mesh, you know, that's that would be the answer. Uh, yeah. So, <laughs> yeah. So I think I have uh, set up all the components. 
So basically, the components that are deployed are uh, uh, support this architecture. Uh, so these are the three components, and then there are two channels in between. Uh, so if uh, there are channels and there are the components, right? And then there are subscriptions. So if you look at uh, the whole uh, manifest, there is actually really nothing going on. Uh, the only thing of interest should be uh, this. This is the uh, this is the component where we can just write JavaScript code within our manifest and manipulate the event. So whatever JavaScript uh, is supported by InfraJS, you could stick it in here and transform the messages. So for example, that's that's a little that's a little secret sauce in Trigger Mesh where we have uh, yeah we have this manifest where you can inject uh, a bit of JSON to to do a bit of magic. We also have a, an event transformation which is fully declarative of Bumblebee. But okay, skip that one, Samir. They get, people are gonna get scared. <laughs> Sure. So uh, we have all the components. So the idea was to uh, pick messages from the Kinesis stream and uh, they should end up in the Kafka cluster. So let me just uh, fire up a Kafka consumer. Uh, so let's fire up a Kafka consumer so that we know that when the messages start uh, showing up in uh, the queue, uh, uh, we can validate that it is actually happening. So let yeah. me just start the consumer. So we're consuming Kafka. How are you producing to Kafka? Yeah. To so, Kinesis. Kinesis. yeah. So what I have done is I have set up a EC2 instance, uh, which uh, which will uh, uh, post. Uh, application logs, Nginx application logs to my Kinesis data stream. Uh, just, uh, 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 I found this nice tool called the Nginx log generator, which generates random uh, Nginx logs, not real. Uh, what I'm doing is that the logs are written out to temp.app.log and and uh, the AWS Kinesis agent is set up to send those that application log to my app string, my Kinesis string. Simple as that. So let's just uh, start generating the logs. So, <clears throat> so if everything works uh, as expected, these logs uh, should get uh, put into the Kinesis uh, data stream. And then from there, uh, our uh, source will pick the uh, data from the Kinesis data stream and then do all the magic and send it to the Kafka, which we should see in this top half of the terminal. So let us just wait. It could take a little bit of time, but let's just wait for that to happen. And by the way, Sebastian, I've been negotiating with the uh, with the production team and I've, I've negotiated an, an additional 10 minutes for us if we if we want it. I think we're, you know, we're, we're almost there. We're almost there. But yeah, so you know, it looks like it looks like a lot, right? But you know, uh, it shouldn't be it shouldn't be uh, uh, underestimated, right? Samir did a bunch of stuff here. He set up a Kafka cluster in OpenShift with Streamz, deployed the uh, Kafka HTTP proxy, created a topic, he installed OpenShift uh, serverless OpenShift uh, eventing, right? Which are K-native components under the hood. He deployed the, the trigger mesh, uh, you know, the trigger mesh operator, right? Uh, AWS sources operator. So now we can actually sync up uh, Kinesis and uh, and Kafka, right? So now he's emitting, you know, messages to Kinesis, and then now, you know, if the entire flow, you know, goes well, you know, <laughs> we should see them in in Kafka uh, with this little cube uh, cube control uh, command. Uh, you know, it takes a little bit of time here. Yeah, it's anytime now. Hold what? What did you say? What did you say? Anytime now. I'm monitoring. Anytime now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Should happen. <laughs> that, that's why we need the 10 minutes extra. <laughs> well, it's actually, it's actually good to see if this is actually live, though, as opposed to, like, just a scripted demo. Um, of course, you know, what could go wrong, right? 
Still at all? Nothing. 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 I think something is going wrong. <laughs> drum drum roll. That's the that's the that's the problem if you don't record if you don't record a demo or if you don't yeah if you don't have a batch script that you execute <laughs> you know that's why you you scared me with that minus one you know I was like <laughs> don't see who right actually I can see the messages are, are being uh, posted uh, I'm having a monitoring terminal here I can see that the messages are going to the uh, being sent through the pipeline, but there is some mistake. Some oh, you're seeing them. So show us the logs of the of the Kinesis source. Yeah, these are the this is the logs of the Kinesis source that's running in OpenShift, right? Yeah. So, so the Kinesis the Kinesis source from Trigger Mesh is getting the is getting the messages from Kinesis. Yeah. And then. It doesn't look like the Kafka consumer is, is, is getting them, so... I'm wondering whether I set up the... Lie. I think I might have not run the subscriptions. Uh, that might explain it, so if there's... Ah, here you go. It, they just arrived, I saw it. Ah, oh, no, That's the other window. Yeah, I think uh, the subscriptions were not done. Because otherwise it would have said already exists or something. But right, unchanged. Ah, yeah, yeah. It, would have, it would have said configured. Click this thing, transform. It come now. <laughs> so, what do you think, Michael? Mike? I, I, I love it when it's verbose like this. And it <laughs> is any does anyone actually go back and actually read all that output? What, oh, here logs? Ah, there you go. Here you go. There are the logs. My bad. <laughs> so if we wanted to verify that these are actually the logs that we are sending, I have to do that. So this is uh, base 64 encoded, uh, that's just base 64 encoded. Yeah. For one of these. Mm. So you know there there are definitely different ways different ways to do this, right? If you if you say you know I'm purely Kafka, I know that I'm Kafka, maybe you can take shortcuts. Uh, you know, if you if you want, you can write your own source and directly do the transformation and directly inject into into an existing Kafka topic, and then everything is packaged as a container, right? So certainly you can, you know, you can uh, you can do it differently, and you can uh, you can do it yourself. But now, you know, that's one source. What happens when suddenly, you know, the next day you need SQS, and then the next day you need Cognito source, and you need DynamoDB, and you need code commit, right? And this is just AWS. So then you need a GitLab event source, a GitHub event source, and then your targets, you know, not only do you need OpenShift serverless, but one day you're going to want to send everything to Elasticsearch. And then one day you're going to want to send everything to Splunk, right? Uh, and then, you know, to, uh, you know, uh, Whatever you you know, so that that's where you know we see the we see the strengths of Trigger Mesh is that we have those catalog of sources and targets, and then you can describe those entire event flows in a declarative manner, uh, and because you have those flows in a declarative uh, you know manifest, suddenly you fall back on your DevOps uh, tooling with your CI/CD and your GitOps, and that's that's the big strength. So that's it. Thank you. So, uh, so like uh, Sebastian mentioned, said, uh, there was hardly, uh, really hardly any real setup of servers and things like that done. Uh, if it was a real application, I would have just had to uh, work on my JavaScript uh, and get the job done. Thanks, Samir.
Thanks, Samir, and we uh, still have plenty of time there. Um, I'm sorry if I went a little fast. Uh, I, uh, I, I was not aware that uh, SAP was going to do a demo, so I had actually planned to. to the Surprise! Whole and and, and, and to Samir, the whole... I, did, I didn't tell you that Mike just wanted a 10-minute demo. <laughs> <laughs> That's fine. It's all it's all good. Um, thanks for coming. I know we're 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 two minutes over. Uh, great session. Thank you, Kitchen. Um, yeah. Anyways, by the way, uh, if anyone wants to get caught up with us from Red Hat, you can send me an email. Just wait at redhat.com. W a i t e. As far as getting connected with our folks from Trigger Mesh, we have our slide up here uh sebastian i don't know if you want to if you want to speak to that i didn't realize you guys were down and your headquarters was in raleigh yeah my uh, co-founder mark is is uh, is in raleigh yeah yeah so no yeah send us you know at trigger mesh on twitter uh if you need more information on the on the product definitely reach out to gary gary at triggermesh.com uh, and then, you know, visit TriggerMesh.com, the website. We're doing regular webinars. Uh, so, you know, uh, definitely feel free to, to reach out and ask us, you know, more questions. We are in the OpenShift uh, IBM Red Hat Marketplace. So you can find us, you know, directly there. When When's your next webinar? Uh, I, I, I would have... I would have asked you, like, hey, what, you know, when, when is the next event you're going to be at? Are you going to be at, at you know, at, in Amsterdam or Copenhagen? But, you know, I think we're going to have to wait another, possibly up to a year for that. But, you know, tell us about your webinars that you do. Like, yeah, mid January, we, we, we're doing something, uh, you know, with Google. So, you know, I'm not, I'm not sure. <laughs> uh, but we, yeah, there, there's going to be some interesting webinar in, um, in, uh, in January. Okay, but then you know, Twitter. Twitter is a good source of information. We are we're pretty active there, and uh, so you, you know, you can you can get all the the latest news or LinkedIn, you know, as well, of course. Sure. Well, great, Sebastian and Samir. Thanks for joining us here for the this edition of the OpenShift Commons Briefing, our oper operator hours TV show. We have it every Wednesday at noon, and. Uh, you know, thanks again, and uh, <clears throat> good luck. Good luck going forward. We'll talk to you soon. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Thanks, Amir. Thanks a lot. Thanks for having us. Bye-bye.